It's a super exclusive interview. Republic gets you first ever interview of the Interpol's Secretary General on Indian TV ahead of Interpol General Assembly. Republic gets the super exclusive details from inside PFI camp. Sensational details of the popular front of India's terror assets are revealed. Republic confronts Rahul Gandhi on Congress leader Udit Raj's insult to President Murgu. 70% people of India eat the salt of Gujarat. This is a height of a psychopathy. But Vata Congress remains defiant, crosses all limits, calls President deaf and dumb. India says stop. Insult to the president. Big lead in Kera violence, uh, eyewitness makes sensational claim, alleges uh, Congress leader was in the mob. After Palghar and Asangli, three sadhus surrounded, attacked and brutally thrashed in Chhattisgarh's Pillai. Hello, welcome. You're watching this special episode of uh, This Is Exclusive. Viewers, undoubtedly, this is a proud moment uh, for the country as India is all set to host uh, the Interpol General Assembly starting 18th of this month. Now, what's very important to point out here is the significance of hosting the Interpol General Assembly. Remember, criminality has become a global phenomenon in the modern age. The dangers of international crime have to be faced squarely by all the nations and hence every individual country has its own international agency to tackle the problems of international crime. The agency is familiarly known as the Interpol. The 90th Interpol General Assembly will be held in New Delhi from 18th to the 21st of October. Let's take a look at this report to understand the significance that it holds. The International Criminal Police Organization, generally known as the Interpol, is an intergovernmental organization which consists of 195 countries. The major role is that to help the police to work together to make the world a safer place. To do this, the organization enables them to share and access data on crimes and criminals and offer a range of technical and operational support. Now the question is, who makes the Interpol? Well, the General Secretariat coordinates day-to-day -day activities to fight a range of crimes. Run by the Secretary General, it is staffed by both police and civilians and comprises a headquarters in Singapore and several satellite offices in different regions. The General Assembly is the governing body and it brings all countries together once a year to take some major decisions. Now these decisions are on policy, resources and finances of the organization that needs to be managed. The General Secretariat provides a range of expertise and services to member countries. Interpol manages 19 police databases with information on crimes and criminals ranging from names and fingerprints to stolen passports which is accessible in real time to countries. Now India will be hosting the 90th Interpol General Assembly in the national capital from 18th to 21st of October. Out of turn one that India will be hosting. Now India of course has been given a chance to host this event as we are celebrating the 76th year of our independence. The key focus of this event is going to be several issues that relate uh, to security. One of them of course is going to be cyber crime, financial uh, crimes and also child pornography that is peddled on the internet. The agenda for this meet will be on the future of policing. Policing today's crime like anti-corruption, cyber crime, crimes against children and others. Not just this, executive committee elections will also be held this time. Some of the successful operations that the CBI carried out with the Interpol is Operation Meghdud, Operation Chakra and Operation Guard. India has also been one of the relatively more active members and all eyes will be on key decisions that will be made during the meeting. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Ahead of the Interpol General Assembly, Interpol Secretary General Jürgen Stock has spoken for the first time on Indian television. With over 40 years of policing experience, Mr. Stock has played a pivotal role in establishing three global programs to guide 
all Interpol's uh, policing activities, starting from counter terrorism to cyber crime. Thank you very much, Mr. Stock, for speaking to Republic TV. Let me straight away dive in by asking you Interpol is moving into the centenary next year. How much has Interpol achieved since its creation nearly 100 years ago? So, where to begin? Interpol provides a unique global platform for law enforcement cooperation across our 195 member countries. Our 19 global databases put 126 million records at the fingertips of police around the world. These databases are searched more than 20 million times each day, which equates to around 250 searches per second. We have assisted our member countries locate and arrest tens of thousands of fugitives and helped identify thousands of child abuse victims. And importantly, since crimes evolve, we keep an eye on the future through research and development in international crime and trends. As we move into our centenary next year, I'm sure that we will continue to see even greater achievements with the support of our membership. Well, a lot is spoken about the challenges faced by Interpol. Many a times there is perception about Interpol which perhaps may not be true. Many do not even understand the true functioning of Interpol. How does it really operate and what are the challenges? Hence, I'm asking you this question as to how do you essentially plan to tackle the challenges arising out of lack of diplomatic relations uh, between its members? Interpol enables police to work directly with their counterparts, even and especially between countries which do not have diplomatic relations, ensuring that Interpol's activities remain in line with our key principles of neutrality and independence is fundamental. And as Secretary General, these are elements I am committed to upholding, as without which international police cooperation could simply not continue. Every police officer in the world knows that in our line of work, you never know who holds the next piece of information you need to save the next life or prevent a terrorist attack. Similarly, any criminal cartel or terrorist network will exploit any gaps in police cooperation, so we cannot afford to have kind of black holes. It is precisely our effort in supporting international police cooperation especially where diplomatic relations do not exist, which makes Interpol a vital part of global security. Well, this brings me to the other question that there has always uh, been an area of concern for the Interpol. Crime of terrorism is outside Interpol's constitutional scope. So how does one bridge the gap in order to improve the scope of uh, functioning? In fact, terrorism is one of our three main crime programs, the other two being cybercrime and organized and emerging crime. Terrorism encompasses a range of complex threats, so Interpol's focus remains on three key areas. Identifying suspects, preventing terrorist travel and tracing their finances. This is another reason why our neutrality is essential and why Interpol's role in combating terrorism is enshrined in numerous United Nations Security Council resolutions. Interpol was the first international organization to develop and implement a military to police information exchange model, putting information from conflict zones into the hands of law enforcement officers. We help countries share biometric data on foreign terrorist fighters and other terrorist suspects, as well as conduct checks against our facial recognition system and DNA and fingerprint databases. Our stolen and lost travel documents database helps countries identify individuals attempting to travel on a fake passport, for example. And in terms of terrorist financing, we work with a number of bodies, such as the Financial Action Task Force, the Egmont Group and financial intelligence units to help drive high-level policies and cooperation to counter terrorist financing. 
With every passing day, the nature of the crime across the globe is changing, sometimes very rapidly. What does future policing look like in the wake of new challenges? Today, we are witnessing unprecedented complexity in our criminal threat landscape, added to which COVID-19 triggered unprecedented opportunistic and predatory criminal behavior. Cybercrime stands, without a doubt, as one of the most challenging and fastest growing criminal threats faced by the international community. The threat is severe, far-reaching, and by definition, borderless. There are gaps in law enforcement cyber capacity across regions. Investigating cybercrime requires specific skills and technology, which many countries do not possess. Again, this is where Interpol provides assistance and equally as important training. By increasing the capacity of our member countries to prevent, detect, investigate and disrupt cyber crimes, we can help protect communities. Well, coming to Interpol's relation with India. In fact, India has been grappling with growing number of economic uh, fugitives. How do you think Interpol can perhaps improve its working with India to help counter this? Our cooperation with India is already extremely strong. What is important to remember, especially with fugitive investigations, is these individuals are actively trying to avoid arrest. This often means fugitives deliberately travel to countries which have no extradition treaty with India or use their illicit gains to hide. In fact, depriving criminals of their ill-gotten gains is a key area for action, especially as less than 1% of global illicit financial flows are intercepted and recovered, which of course inversely means that nearly 99% of stolen assets remain in criminal hands. The tracing, seizure and confiscation of criminal assets should be a priority for all countries and Interpol stands ready to provide any and all assistance. In fact, India has uh, played an active role in Interpol. How do you see the contribution that uh, India has made to Interpol, keeping in mind in the last few months we've seen uh, several big operations that were carried out uh, here in India with the help of Interpol? India is one of our most active and engaged member countries. Through the Central Bureau of Investigation, we see extremely high levels of cooperation in combating all crime types. A recent example is the successful Operation Garuda, which resulted in the seizure of large amounts of drugs and a significant number of arrests. What is equally as important, these operations identify further links between organized crime groups, which will no doubt result in more arrests and seizures in the future. And I was delighted when earlier this year, India became the 68th country to connect to our international child sexual exploitation database. This is another demonstration of India's strong commitment to global law enforcement cooperation and their efforts to protect the most vulnerable members of society. These are just two examples of the kind of leadership in law enforcement shown by India and why New Delhi is the ideal location to bring together police chiefs from around the world for our Interpol General Assembly. On the other side, Republic gets you details from inside the popular front of India camp. Sensational details of PFI's terror assets are revealed on This Is Exclusive. Amity has been ranked India's number one private university for the 10th year by India Today. A testimony to Amity's world-class education whilst imbibing values and sanskars in students. A massive fire broke out in Delhi's Gandhi Nagar cloth market while the cause of the fire is unknown. Delhi's Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal assured that all measures have been taken.
Eight people died in flash floods during the immersion of Durga idols at Jalpai Guru district in West Bengal on uh, Wednesday evening. The mishap occurred when hundreds of people had gathered along the banks of the river Mal for the immersion of the idols. While there was no local prediction for rainfall, suddenly the water level in the river rose, uh, probably due to rainfall in the higher reaches. No longer on the fence anymore. A new India is empowering a paradigm shift. The mission now is global dominance. Republic Media Network brings you India's biggest economic summit. The CBI conducted raids across 12 locations in Karnataka in connection with a cyber fraud case. Reportedly, 1.89 crore rupees have been recovered from seized bank accounts. The CBI has also registered multiple cases and seized digital evidence in the case. The CBI will produce businessmen and accused in liquor gate Vijay Nair in court as his custody ends today. Vijay Nair was arrested in a case of alleged irregularities in the now withdrawn Delhi liquor policy. The Russian hacker who was arrested by the CBI at the Indira Gandhi International Airport in connection with the alleged JE examination scam is to be produced in court today after the end of two-day remand period. As the crackdown on the banned PFI continues, the NIA is set to produce in nine, all 19 accused associated with the PFI in court. All the 19 accused were arrested over terror funding charges and sources have said that the NIA is set to press for their extended custody. A massive fire broke out in Delhi's Gandhi Nagar cloth market while the cause of the fire is unknown. Delhi's Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal assured that all measures have been taken. Eight people died in flash floods during the immersion of Durga idols at Jalpai Guru district in West Bengal on uh, Wednesday evening. The mishap occurred when hundreds of people had gathered along the banks of the river Mal for the immersion of the idols. While there was no local prediction for rainfall, suddenly the water level in the river rose, uh, probably due to rainfall in the Well, shift focus now to the other story that we're getting you on This Is Exclusive. After a landmark decision by the centre of banning the popular front of India and its affiliates in the country, the crackdown on terror trading centres off of the popular front of India has now started. In fact, police have recently raided the Freedom Community Hall at Mittur in Dakshina, Kannada district on the suspicion that PFI workers were trained in these premises. Take a look at what was found in these terror camps. After banning PFI and its affiliates in the country, the operation against the office and other training centers has now started. In exclusive input that Republic has got, we learned that all PFI workers from across Karnataka were trained in Mitturu in Bantwala Taluk of Dakshina, Kannada district. The district police have moved to seize Freedom Community Hall, which was running a training center. This center hired retired police officers to give weapon trainings to PFI cadres. The NIA investigation revealed that those involved in the riots of KJ Halli and DJ Halli that took place in many places including the village were trained in this center. Not just this, Shihabuddin, the main accused in the murder of BJP youth leader Praveen Nataru murder case, was continuously trained in the center. Out of the three main masterminds of terror training in Karnataka, Mohammad Ashraf and Ayub Agnadi has been arrested, whereas Masood Agnadi is on the run. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Getting us some breaking news right now. Mastermind of Karnataka PFI training camps uh, has been arrested by the police and incriminating details have emerged. We're getting to learn that uh, it was Ayub and his other friends who were linked to the assassinations of Sharad Madiwala who was uh, 
murdered in 2017 and Praveen Netaru, who was brutally killed in 2022. Not just that, more breaking news now coming in as far as uh, the modus operandi of the Popular Front of India. Terror financing camps. Uh, what we are picking up is that uh, retired police officers were essentially made to train PFI carters and the youngsters were recruited on the pretext of money and then brainwashed and asked to pick up camps. Full details right now on This Is Exclusive. Uh, let me also bring in my colleague uh, Prajwal who is uh, joining us from Bengaluru right now. Prajwal, two aspects. One with regards to the modus operandi. The fact that they were getting in uh, retired police officers for the training. Now, this was known for quite some time. But what is it that the police uh, have found in terms of their association? Any concrete uh, details? And of course, also the arrest that was made of Ayu. Uh, Shavan, now what we learn about Ayu Bagnadi is all the cases, all the dots joined together, there is only one prominent name which is coming to light and that is Ayub Agnadi and now he is being named as the PFI terror mastermind because he was not only involved in the assassination plots of uh, Sharath Madiwala in 2017 and Praveen Nettaru in 2022. It is also now pointing that uh, he had a massive role to play in the DJ Halli and KG Halli riots, the Devara Jeevana Halli and the Kadugondana Halli riots uh, and also in setting fire to the house of uh, the Congress MLA Akanda Srinivasa Murthy in August 2020 where there were 500 to 700 people who barged into two police stations in a coordinated 